In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. It is my great pleasure to be here today to be with you visitors and you members of Old North Church to celebrate together all saints and all souls with my dear friend Matthew, who he and I have um, been through many interesting adventures together. And I promise I won't tell any of them today. But I am grateful to be here and glad to be reflecting with you this morning on the gospel story we hear about Jesus and raising of Lazarus. Now I need to tell you to begin with that I always get caught up in this story for lots of different reasons, but first of all, as a child, and I'm a PK, a preacher's kid, my dad was a Navy chaplain and a Presbyterian minister, we used to have Bible contests and memorizing things and all that kind of stuff. My mother, when I was pretty young, took me aside and said, you know, John 11.35, it's the shortest one going. Jesus wept. So in the middle of this wonderful story is this um, Bible game we used to play in Sunday school. And it's easy to miss the rest of the context of the story when you're trying to just count the amount of words and the amount of Bible verses you can memorize. But for me, this is a story about again, about Martha and Mary and about their brother Lazarus. I am one of four sisters. There were five of us in the family. Two older sisters, then my brother, then myself and my younger sister. So I know a little bit about being a sister and of having sisters that drive me crazy. Some of us are more practical than others. Martha was the practical one. Mary was the intellectual or spiritual or we're not sure what she might have thought of herself, but we know what Martha thought about her. She probably didn't, she probably weaseled out of getting, having to do the dishes when she was supposed to. And Martha was usually the one left doing the dishes or scrubbing up or taking care of the things that need to be taken care of. As we begin the story, Martha and the Jews who are weeping encounter Jesus as he's entering into their community, into their property. And she says, and she fall to his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. I can't imagine what this looked like, except I can imagine what it felt like. I can imagine she wanted to hit somebody. She wanted to cry out. She wanted to scream. She wanted something more than just having a brother who had died and having to go through the ritual of burying her brother, binding him up and burying him. Whether he was their older brother or the younger brother, their life was defined by having this brother, and without him, their life had changed forever. And all the things that come with grief, the anger, the loss, the fear, the brokenheartedness, are in this gospel today, just as they are, my friends, in our lives today. We have lived through a period of time in our history where more than 750,000 Americans have died from COVID, where we still are masking and anxious and afraid. And into our story comes Jesus, who is not upset by the fact that Mary is upset and confused and frustrated nor that Martha worries about how her brother actually smells. But his heart is broken on their behalf. His tears are theirs for them. And he cries for us as well in our times. 
About 30 some years ago, my second oldest sister, Peggy, who was a Margaret, called her Peggy, passed away from cancer that took over her whole body. And I got a call from my parents while she was going to the hospital for a surgery that we hoped would correct and remove the tumors. And my parents called, they were in Florida with her and said if I would, could I come down and be with her and with them. My parents were people of great faith and yet my mother, like Mary, I'm sure was angry with God as we all were for our wonderful sister being torn apart by cancer. I got off the plane and my dad picked me up and we went to the hospital and he went one direction and I stopped to use the restroom and he told me how to get to the hospital. I had been ordained for a very short period of time but I knew I was ordained long enough to know I knew very little of what I should do in these circumstances. It's a difference when it's your sister, when it's a family member, when it's someone you love. So I took my time tried to get lost in the hospital, which is pretty easy to do in most hospitals. I was afraid and didn't want to face her death, her illness. The gift was when I went into the hospital room, my parents were sitting one on each side. She had lost all her hair from the treatment, the chemo and the radiation and other things she had gone through. And she looked absolutely beautiful. Gloriously beautiful, she was a beautiful person inside and out, and very funny. But she was extraordinarily beautiful in this moment, and I knew instantaneously that she would not be with us any longer, and that she was safe and whole and healthy in the arms of God. Our loss was horrible and tremendous, and she died a few days later after the surgery was not able to happen because she was not anymore able, her body was no longer able to fight the cancer. Mary and Martha, these sisters, are angry and frustrated and sad and tormented just as we are when we are faced with such tremendous loss. And yet Jesus says to them, we're going to get him out. We're going to set him free. We're going to bring him back. Now, there are times in our lives where we wish we could bring our relatives back. And some, if we're honest with each other, we are glad they're not around. Some of us have had friends that we have lost, that we have no idea how we can go forward without them. But Jesus said to them, as he called Lazarus out, loose him, let him go. In other translations, it says, unbind him, set him free. The good news of our gospel today is that all of us have times when we face tremendous loss and anxiety and suffering, and yet Jesus is there in the middle of us, weeping with us, and calling us to loose them and let them go, set them free. We don't know how long Lazarus lived. We don't know much more about the story except for the fact that it transformed the world around them. Jesus is always about transforming not just those individuals, but the whole world, the whole understanding of God's love for us, the whole world around us. That even in loss, God is with us. Even in our deepest, darkest places, God is with us. Even when we have given up, even when we're angry and frustrated, even when our faith seems as if it's seeping out of us, God is with us. And God is weeping with us, and God is among the people here and now even when God was with the people who came in this place 
to try to bring freedom to set people free who are not free. In each generation, we've had to respond to what it means to loose them, let them go, set them free. And as we remember the saints in the past and present today, we are reminded that God is calling us, even in the depths of our pain and confusion, to be those who are willing to loose one another and set people free and let them go. I want to end by singing you a hymn that I learned when I was a young child. One of the challenges or gifts, it can be one or the other any given day, of being brought up in a clergy household is spend a lot of time in church and in all sorts of places and learn lots of different pieces of music. This is not one of those things that's in our Episcopal hymnal, but it always has spoken to me when I am in those darkest places, when I have given up, when I am like Mary saying, if you had just been here, this wouldn't have happened. And with Martha, Martha who said, it's too late, he stinks. That God is with us even in these darkest places when we have forgotten how to pray. And it goes like this. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus sees my portion, my constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Amen.